All right, greetings everyone. I'm going to work out question one from the NCEA level two algebra test from 2016. And I'm just going to open it up and work, work through each problem and see how we go. Now the marking schedule hasn't come out yet this year, so we'll see, we'll see what the levels are with achieved merit and excellence and all of that. Okay, so first one, we look at this, and it's an old simplifying one. Now I've got a fraction to a negative exponent, a fraction to a negative exponent. What that means when I've got a fraction to a negative exponent is it's equal to the reciprocal to the positive exponent. So this right here is equal to uh, c squared over 3b, that's the reciprocal, to the positive 4 power. Now I've, I've explained that in other videos, so that's, I guess, kind of a shortcut. Now when I have a fraction to a power, it's going to equal each of these raised to the power of 4. So it's going to equal c squared to the power of 4 over 3b to the power of 4. And I don't think I'm going to get any simplifying on the top and bottom here because they're different letters. Uh, power to a power gets multiplied, so that's c to the 8th. And 3 to the 4th is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is 81. And b to the power of 4 is just b to the power of 4. And my highlighter made a bit of a mess there. Sorry about that. Okay, let's take a look at this next one. I've never seen one like this before in any exam. And I looked at it and I went, what the heck? Okay, I, you know, I don't even know if I taught a lesson to my students on how to do this. So, okay, let's take a look. The first thing I did, change this quadratic in the form of x minus p squared plus q. Okay, most people go, what the heck is going on here? Um, so what I looked at is I, oh, minus, come on, come on, let's get that straight there, minus 8x plus 10. I looked at it as a completing the square problem. Now, I've done completing the square before. It's a way of solving quadratics. Now, what you do, and, and I just, I looked at it in that sense. I said, okay, what if this was set to zero? I know it's not set to zero, but I'm just going to play around with it. And I'm going to solve this as if I'm completing the square. The first step of that is to take that positive 10 and biff it over to the other side, making it negative 10. Now, completing the square means take half of this coefficient and square it, and then add that to both sides. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. Square that is 16. And I'm going to add 16 to both sides. Because when I do that, I get a, a, a perfect square trinomial here. And this factorizes to get x minus 4 squared. And negative 10 plus 16 gives me 6. So as you can see, I'm pretty close here. And the only thing I need to do is to take this positive 6 and change it to the other side and get x minus 4 squared minus 6 uh, equals 0. I guess I don't really need that equals 0 there, but I just made it into an equation so I could rearrange it uh, into, into this form. Interesting question. Use a different highlighter there since that made it kind of smudgy. Sorry about that. Uh, next one. Take a look at this one. Show that the solutions of this equation are four times the solution of this equation. Basically, they just want you to solve both of these equations and compare their answers, I guess. You know, I, I'm, I'm not really sure. Well, this, this first equation here, that is a pretty simple factorizing one. Um, this one factorizes to um, x plus 8 times x minus 7 equals 0. And how I know that is, you know, it's, it's the product of negative 56 and the sum of positive 1. So what two numbers multiply to get negative 56 and add to get the positive 1? It's positive 8 and negative 7. So my solution's here using the zero product property. It's going to be negative 8 here, and this will be positive 7. Okay? So they're my, they're my two solutions for, for this equation. Now my next equation, this one, it's just a harder factorizing one. I suppose I could use the quadratic formula or graphics calculator, you know. There's a number of ways to solve this quadratic. I'm just going to factorize it. And the way I do that is I multiply 4 times negative 14, 4 times negative 14, and that gives me negative 56. And I think if I do the same very similar thing, I think of two numbers that multiply to get to negative 56 and add to get to that positive 1. 
and those two numbers again are, those two numbers are positive 8 and negative 7. Now what I do with that is I rewrite this term using two terms with these coefficients. What the heck does that mean? So I mean 4x squared, and I, instead of writing 1x, I write it as plus 8x minus 7x, and then that minus 14, and then equals 0. Okay, so that's just a little factorizing trick that I've taught before and I've made videos of. And yeah, we've, we've done that before, so I'm going to move on. And now what I do is I do this factorize by grouping trick here. And I think, okay, uh, what are the common factors of these two terms? And I think it's 4x. Get 4x. And when I do that, I get x plus 2. And then I do that same thing right here. And I want to make sure it's got another factor of x plus 2. I want these to be common factors. Well, if that's a factor of x plus 2, then the common factor in here must be minus 7. Because minus 7 times x is minus 7x, and minus 7 times 2 is minus 14. Well, having these as a common factor means, let's put this equal 0. It means that this is going to factorize to x plus 2, brackets, 4x minus 7, close brackets, equals 0. Okay. So my solution for this guy is x equals negative 2. And my solution for this one, running out of space here, sorry about that, it's not the cleanest looking work here. I'm going to set this equal to 0 and solve for x. So I get 4x equals 7, and I get x equals 7 divided by 4. So let's write that here, x equals, let's just say, 7 quarters. I'm not going to worry about any decimals or anything. Now, don't start to panic here, because let's look at what the problem asks. Show that uh, the solutions of this equation are 4 times the solution of this equation. Well, they are, because negative 2 times 4, let's, negative 2, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, okay? And 7 quarters times 4 is 7. Of course it is. 7 quarters times 4 equals 7. Check, check, done. Okay, interesting problem there. Moving on, probably the most uh, challenging one of this, of this section. Find the relationship between the solutions of this equation and the solutions of this equation where these are real numbers. Now, most people would look at this and really have no clue where to start, including myself. So I went, I don't know what to do here. The only thing I know where I can go, I, factorizing isn't going to get me anywhere, um, was I just did quadratic formula. Okay, and I went, okay, what's, you know, I'll, I'll look at this in the sense of the quadratic formula. x equals opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, remember, I might have to, I might have to do this one on a separate sheet of paper. Hold on. Okay, that's better. Sorry about that. I need more space for this. So here's the question, and I said, here's our, here's our definition for the quadratic formula, which isn't given in the problem, but I don't see any other way to, to do this. So uh, let's begin here. So I'll call this one equation 1, this one equation 2, and I'm going to substitute d, e, and f. Now I know, just work with me, because um, in the quadratic formula, this represents the coefficient of the x squared, uh, b is the coefficient of the x term, and uh, this is the constant term. So I know I have a lot of letters here, but just work with me. So for this equation, x is going to equal uh, the opposite of e, the opposite of e, plus or minus square root of e squared, so I'm going off of this formula here, minus 4 times b times f, close brackets, all over 2 times d. Okay, now I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to say, can't really clean it up that much. Now, if you have any other ways that you did this, please leave it in the comments below, because like I said, the answers haven't come out yet. Not really much to clean up here, but I just get e minus e squared minus 4df under the discriminant all over 2d. Okay, so that's, that's that. Okay, so for equation 2, for equation 2, 
I do the same thing, but with the, I say, okay, x equals uh, the opposite of e, the opposite of e, plus or minus. Now, if you don't know what the quadratic formula is, you'd be completely lost right now. Plus or minus e squared minus 4 times. Now, in this equation, a is equal to 1. There's an invisible 1 there. 1 times c, which is going to be, in this case, is going to be df. df. Close bracket, make that square root, all over 2 times a, which in this case is 1. 2 times 1. Okay, I clean this up a bit. Not much to clean up. A little bit. Negative e plus or minus square root e squared minus 4 times 1 times df is just 4df. That looks pretty familiar there. All over 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, well let's look at these two. And I looked at them and I said, well, the, the numerators are all the same. The only thing that's different is that right there. That's 2d and that's 2. That's the only difference. And so I went, okay, well, there's a couple of things. Um, first of all, I thought, well, if I thought if d equals 1, then the solutions will be the same. Then the solutions of equation 1 and 2 will be the same. Sorry about my sloppy handwriting right now. That's the first thing, because if d equals 1, then that's going to be 2, and that's going to be 2, and the rest of it's going to be the same. Okay? I mean, is this what they want? I'm not sure. Or I thought, well, it, if the only thing that's different is d is in the denominator here, then I'll say, well, uh, then e e for equation 1, for equation 1, the solutions, the solutions are a fraction. The solutions are, but what fraction? 1 over d, 1 d, I don't even know what that word is, of equation 2. Okay, that's what fraction they are. I don't really know what else they want from here, but that's what I took from this problem. Okay, so if you have any comments, please let me know. Now for the last one. Okay, sorry, I lied. It's not the last one. Second to the last one. Uh, let's take a look. An equation, quadratic equation, is in this form and has these solutions. Find a possible set of values for A, B, and C. Okay, well, I mean, okay. So, we can, we can do this one. Uh, first of all, if it, if, it has, if it has these solutions, if these are the roots of the equation, that means, so these are the, these are the answers here, we know that that's going to be x plus a half times x minus two-thirds is going to give us zero. Whoops, sorry about that. Okay. Um, now, Fractions don't help us too much, so I know from factorizing that I can set each of these factors equal to zero and solve for x. So I can say x plus one-half equals zero, and x minus two-thirds equals zero. Now, in this form, I want to eliminate fractions. I don't want fractions. They're not going to help me out any at all. Now, what I do here is I go, okay, I'm going to take that half, put it to the other side, and get x equals negative one-half. Take that, put that to the other side, and get x equals positive two-thirds. And now what I'm going to do is multiply the other side by two. So I get two x equals, and that's going to be a negative one. And then I'm going to take that negative one and put it to the other side. So it's positive one. Two x plus one equals zero. So I have no fractions there, and that's my goal. I'll do the same for this. Multiply the other side by 3, so I get 3x equals 2. Subtract the 2, and I get 3x minus 2 equals 0. Okay? Now, these are the deal. These are the things I want to work with. Okay? So, in this form of no fractions means that I'm going to multiply these two guys together. Okay? So, I'm going to say, all right, well, what do I get when I multiply 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 2? I guess... We can still put the equal zero there, even though we know the solutions. We're not really solving it. We just want it in this form. And I multiply. First is going to be 6x squared 
outside is going to be minus 4x, inside is going to be plus 3x, and last is going to be minus 2. Remember those are all multiplying. Collect those like terms in the middle. 6x squared, um, what do I get there? Minus x, is that right? Yes. Minus 2 equals 0. Okay, cool. So I'm pretty much there. I've got it in that form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a is 6, b is negative 1, of course, because there's an imaginary 1 there, and c equals negative 2. Okay, interesting problem, that one. All right, now for the last one. That's, that's a goodie. Okay, that one's going to take some time here. But it's really not anything that different other than this bit. Okay, so find the positive integer, integer values for k so that this quadratic equation has real rational solutions. Justify your answer. Okay, hang on. All right, so here's what I did. So real, ra real rational solutions means that the discriminant, the part under the radical and the quadratic formula, is going to be greater than 0. It's going to be a positive number. So b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0 for this looking quadratic. Well, this looks nothing like a quadratic, really, does it? You're probably looking at that going, well, now that doesn't really look like a quadratic, but it is. Okay, so first of all, um, let's look at what b is. b, for this guy, is going to be the coefficient in front of the x. It's going to be 4k. B is 4k. Um, A is going to equal the coefficient of the x squared term. In this case, it's C, uh, 2. And C, this, uh, this is the funny part of this question. I don't really know what they were doing. But C is that whole expression right there. Okay, so C is this whole thing right there. 2k squared plus 3k minus 11. And I've never seen it. I mean, I've seen problems like this, but not with a huge expression like that for C. So we go, okay, well, let's, let's do all this. Let's, let's, let's substitute it in here. That's the word I'm looking for, substitute. Sorry about that. Um, B is 4K, so I'm going to say 4K. Don't forget to put it in brackets because we're squaring the whole thing, not just the K. Minus 4 times a, which is 2, and c is this massive long expression right here, 2k squared plus 3k minus 11, close brackets, has to be bigger than 0. Now, it looks really scary, but it actually gets a little bit better. 4k squared is 16k squared, of course. Now, here, okay, this part, we've got to take this one thing at a time. Um, Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, so negative 8. And now I'm going to rewrite this expression, which is the C, 2K squared plus 3K minus 11, close brackets, greater than 0. And now I'm going to expand that negative 8 through. And you might see what's going to happen when I do that. Negative 8 times this is negative 16K squared. Negative 8 times that is minus 24 and negative 8 times negative 11 is positive 88 greater than 0. Okay, well it goes from something that's really tricky, which is a quadratic inequality. Those can be pretty hard. But these, boom, boom, see you later. Okay, and what I'm left with is negative 24k plus 88 is greater than 0. I'm left with something that's pretty manageable. Now it's just solving a, an equation. Negative 24k is greater than, that goes to negative 88. And of course, to solve for k, I'm going to divide both sides by 24. But remembering, I switch the sign around when I divide by a negative number. Negative 88 divided by negative 24 gives me 3 and 2 thirds. 3 and 2 thirds. Okay, so what's the possible integer value for k so that this um, condition applies? Any number less than 3 and 2 thirds. Okay, so they're, they're my solutions. Like I said, the marking schedule hasn't come out yet. Um, if you have any comments, of, uh, you know, I could have made mistakes here. I hope I didn't. I worked these out twice, but you never know. Um, please let me know, and I hope, I hope this helps. Okay, thanks a lot.